In this video, we're gonna use Fusion to make a ghost effect like this. My name is Casey. I teach content creators how to make amazing things in Fusion. I also have a free video course called the Fusion Survival Guide. It goes over the essential tips that you need to know if you're new to Fusion. There's a link in the description. Now, I'm gonna walk through this technique really slowly, almost like you're kind of watching over my shoulder as I make this. I know a lot of people like this style of video, so let's go. Here we are in Resolve 18.6 in the Fusion page, and I just have a single clip in the timeline, and it's just our ghost without any ghost treatment on him. I'm gonna be over this shot in the timeline and then click on the Fusion page. That'll bring it into Fusion. I'm gonna to go to our workspace and uncheck show page navigation just to give us a little more room. And I'll also close our media pool for now. I've already renamed the media in to OG for original and we got nothing going on so far. But here's pretty much how we're gonna do this. To do this kind of effect, you need a clean plate. If you don't know what a clean plate is, it's basically the shot that you are working with without the main subject in it. It's just the background. So I happen to have that in our media pool. We have a clean plate here. I'll grab this and just drag it into our comp here. I'll hit two on the keyboard just to show you what this is. So a clean plate is just the camera not moving. It's in the exact same position as it was when we were shooting our subject, just without him there. See? So this is going to be great if we want to do something like make him kind of see through. And before we even do that, I'm going to go up here to the upper right on this little lattice thing and twirl this down. And I'm going to pick a view LUT and we'll just go to Blackmagic Design, Blackmagic Design Gen 5 film to extended video. I'm picking this because this footage was shot on a pocket 6K in Gen 5 film. Okay. So if you're shooting on something else, you know, shooting on Sony or something, pick the LUT that is best for that camera. But my camera is Gen 5. And so we'll just say Gen 5 to extended video. And what this is going to do is kind of approximate our color grade that we're going to do in the color page. This doesn't actually affect the output of Fusion. It's just a LUT that we're kind of previewing things under. And I can turn this off and on. So this is how it's actually going to look when we render it out of Fusion. But this is basically what it's going to look like, kind of approximately what it will look like when we do some color management on this and do our color grade. So it's always a good idea if you have log footage to have some kind of color transform or LUT on your viewer. So you have some idea of what this will look like after you do your comp. So let's take this media in, which is our clean plate. I'll hit F2 and rename this clean plate. And really the most basic version of this, you can probably even do in the edit page. It's just taking the clean plate and putting it over our original or putting the original over the clean plate either way, and just taking this merge and blending it down. And that's going to make him see through. And actually just because it's a little less confusing, I'm going to switch these. I'm going to take the original footage and I'm going to put that above our merge and the clean plate and put that to the left. And I'm going to switch the foreground and the background of our merge just by hitting control T. The background is always the yellow input. The foreground is always the green input. So now we have this over our clean plate and I can just take this blend down and I can decide how see-through I want my ghost. So, I mean, you can, if you want just a really basic ghost effect, just take that blend down. And if you have a clean plate, boy, that works pretty well. He looks like a ghost, you know, not too bad. Again, you can probably do this in the edit page. You don't need to do a whole lot of work in Fusion, but we're gonna take this beyond that, okay? So I'm actually going to just take our merge out of here, connect just our original footage. And what we're gonna do is we want to make a mat. We basically want to outline our guy here because we want to select just where he is and none of the background because we want to do some specific things just to him and not to the background. There are a few ways to do that. The easiest way if you have the studio version of Resolve, that is the paid version, is to use something called Magic Mask. So I'll hit Shift and Spacebar. That'll bring up our Select Tool panel here, and I'll just type Magic. I'm searching for magic and that'll bring up our magic mask and I'll hit add. I'll need to connect something to it. So I'll connect our original footage to it and I'll hit two on the viewer so that we're viewing our magic mask here in our second viewer. And what the magic mask does is it magically lets you select a subject in your shot and it, it will basically track and rotate them out in a pretty, pretty good way most of the time. Depends on your subject, depends on what you're doing. But in this instance, check this out. I can just kind of drag around my guy, just kind of color him in like this. And look at that. It's just stupid how well it does that. Once you have your subject selected, you can go here to this track forward and reverse, and it will do a pretty darn good job of rotoing out your subject. Now, it's not perfect. There's a lot of things imperfect about this, but dang, it does not take very long and the result you get is pretty good. So for instance, we have this little bit here. So we might just kind of go back a couple frames to where that kind of starts like this. And once I see this background kind of coming up, I can hold down alt and just kind of drag like this to make sure we don't select it. And then I can just track forward from there and that will usually fix that. 
Okay, we have some stuff around his ear and stuff that's not great either. But the good news about this is that this particular effect that we're doing, it doesn't need to be really exact. It just needs to be pretty good. So this is good enough for what we're doing here. Now, if we were going to put him on a different background and stuff, ugh, it would be a lot of work. But because we have him perfectly on the same background, we could do something like just merge him over our clean plate and then just look at our clean plate here. And it looks pretty good. I mean, it's going to work. Looks like he's there, right? Because he actually is there. He's in the same lighting and everything and the edges work pretty well and everything's pretty good. One thing I might do is just go into the magic mask, go into our mat here, blur these edges just a touch, just so it's not like too crazy. And man, like now we have him isolated from the background without having to do a green screen or anything like that. And it looks a lot more realistic than doing a green screen and trying to get all that right, that misery. And so from there, we could take this merge and we could take the blend down and kind of do a similar thing. But what's neat is we have this mask now and we can do all kinds of craziness with this mask. For instance, we could, if we want to add kind of some clouds or fog or something, we could grab this fast noise and merge the fast noise over everything. And we'll just grab this fast noise and push up the detail a little bit, push down the scale. And we'll take this merge. And instead of apply mode normal, let's do maybe screen and then just take the blend down a lot. So now we have this kind of fog stuff. We'll push up the seethe rate so that this kind of animates over time. Let's push it up a little more so we can see it anyway. So now we have these kind of clouds being whooshy. But we can limit this to be within our subject just by taking this mask and reusing it for our merge too. And look what happens. Now we have this fast noise just within our subject. Isn't that cool? So we could do something like give him a little bit of fog and maybe I'll even mask this fast noise before we even merge it over. So now we can just kind of isolate and combine these masks. We can have him kind of foggy just at the bottom. And so that's a nice way to do it. One thing I actually might do is sort of flip how this mask works because we have these kind of edges here that are a little bit too bright and we're kind of relying a lot on the edges of our mask, which, you know, isn't perfect. And so this might actually even look a little bit more natural. Let's just get rid of our fast noise here. If we were to take something like put our clean plate over our original footage, flip these. So we have our clean plate over our original footage. We're just laying it over like this. So we can do our blend thing if we want to, but let's only put our clean plate over where our magic mask is. And now we're pretty much just putting that clean plate right where our subject is. Okay, so he kind of has this weird see-through edge, but we can take this magic mask and we can blur it a lot more than we would normally be able to. Dilate it a little bit, blur it, that kind of thing. And then we can take this merge and blend this down. And then we can just put this background over him and our edges are a lot better a lot nicer, a lot more realistic because they're the real edges in our actual footage here. The only part that's really fake is just the see-through stuff here. And it just kind of comes across a little better. So now we have him slightly see-through and we can still use this magic mask to put this noise over like that. And now he's kind of glowing off the edges a little bit and that's fine. Kind of depends on the feeling that we're going for here. Okay, now let's make him kind of glow. And we can do this with a color corrector in a bunch of different ways. There's, there's a lot of ways to do this, but let's just take the color corrector like this just color correct all of the footage but let's limit it to the magic mask like this so now if we push this really green it's just going to be our subject we're just reusing that mask so I'm going to push this pretty green, maybe push up the contrast a little bit, something like that. And then we can control how see-through he is just by pushing up the blend on this clean plate. And now we have, you know, our basic look and it looks pretty good and it's not very hard to do. Like this might seem complicated with all these nodes, but really all we're doing is we're taking our original footage and we're making a mask, which is just a nice soft mask around him using our magic mask. And then we're using that mask, this, this alpha channel to control where our clean plate goes which is just our background without our subject and we're putting this over our subject in fact you can kind of see what we're doing here if I mask just the clean plate instead we're putting this over our subject like this and we're just kind of blending it down to make it seem like he's see-through then we're taking a color corrector with that same mask and doing our color correction with it right could add a little bit of gain make him glow a little bit we could even do something like 
actually add a glow. Let's just make this tasteful, just start to glow a little bit. And again, we're gonna limit this with the same mask, with that mask input, so that it's just glowing within our ghost. Isn't that cool? And we can play with the blend and see what we wanna do and kind of change that up. But that's pretty much all there is to it. I mean, the real key here is making sure you grab that clean plate and using that magic mask to kind of fade that in so that you have those nice edges. And one thing that we did in the movie actually was we made an edge mat and kind of blurred the edges of him a little more. So maybe we'll just push this here. So I'll make a blur here. And so we'll be able to kind of blur the edges of him. But first we need to make a mat to tell this blur to only blur his edges. So we can do that by taking this magic mask and using something like a matte control. We'll put that in the foreground of it. And then I can do something like take a erode dilate node, take this mask into the erode dilate node and put that into the foreground of the matte control. This erode dilate node, if we look at the alpha, this kind of shrinks or grows the alpha channel. And so I can shrink this down a little bit. And then in the matte control, if I bring this up, I can combine this mat and this mat in various ways. And so in combine, we'll say combine alpha and the combine operation will say subtract. And what that will do is just select the edges because I have the full size mat and then I have the second mat that's kind of being taken away from it. So we just have this selection of the edges like this. And now I can use this to tell our blur where to be. And let's blur this a lot. Let's change our erode dilate a little bit. Make sure we have a nice white mat here. So actually let's grab another erode dilate. We'll run this through here first. So I'll dilate this a little bit to push that out, push this one in so that we're just making this stroke a little bit bigger. And now our blur, we can take just the edges and blur that a little bit. So that just kind of breaks up his edges a little more, make him seem a little wispier, a little bit less cut out. And then you can combine this basic look with a bunch of other things. And one thing that we did was we did kind of a, a displace on this too. So we could do something like a displace node. We'll just put this here and we'll put some fast noise into the second input of it. And what this will do is I'll take this noise and scale that down a lot like this, push up the detail a little bit and push the seed rate up. So we have these kind of dancing clouds and that's going to drive this displace node, which kind of gives you this little wobbly looking feeling. And again, we're just going to limit this to the magic mask. Bloop. And now we have kind of this wobbly looking displacement and you can add all kinds of stuff to your mask <laughs> and really make them look strange. But you know, if we just keep that kind of subtle to where it's dancing around a little bit, then we have this nice little kind of wispy effect. And it depends on how crazy you want to get. Maybe we don't want to do that so much on his face. We could take something like an ellipse mask and plug this into our fast noise and just have it not displace stuff so much here to be a little less strong, whatever we want to do. Hmm. But this is a lot of fun making a ghost and a pretty easy thing to do, especially if you have that clean plate. If you're sort of new to Fusion and you're like, what, what is, I'm very lost. Make sure to check out our Fusion Survival Guide. Those are some essential tips for things that you need to learn about Fusion if you're relatively new. I also have a mega course on Fusion, Fusion Zero to Hero. There's a link in the description below. But for now, maybe check out the Fusion Survival Guide. That'll give you a lot of good tips. And of course, hang around this channel because we do lots of Fusion stuff here. Hope this was fun and inspiring for you. What other ways would you do a ghost effect? Let me know in the comments, okay? I hope you have a ghost-free evening. Unless you're doing VFX, then I hope there's twice as many ghosts as usual.